pathological fracture usually come as a short note and uh, i just want to uh, give you concept about this abnormal fracture by which you can solve many mcqs as well as uh, for our post graduation student they can uh, get maximum information from this see uh, before going to in details in pathological fracture we should know what is pathological fracture and we should know if we don't do the proper treatment or proper guideline we uh, can uh, fall in a big trouble see i am giving a small example this gentleman was present with a intertrochanteric fracture now one nail has been done nicely but after 6 months see the osteolysis patient came with implant breakage then patient got admitted in a hospital then the this is the picture we and this associated with huge swelling of the proximal thigh and patient die within 2 to 3 days after the admission with pulmonary metastasis actually it was a case of pleomorphic sarcoma and uh, there was a osteolysis which is not uh, properly evaluated during this operation and uh, after that uh, there was no proper follow up as a result patient came with us with this type of problem but operation was nicely done same thing when we can got any type of osteolysis over uh, the bone we should know how to read this x-ray how to manage this patient otherwise due to some medical legal problem we can fall uh, in soup so what do mean by pathological fracture it's actually a spontaneous fracture without any significant trauma and there will be very minimum hematoma over this fracture site and uh, the fracture pattern will be very unusual and generally pathological fracture most commonly occur about the age of 50 around and uh, maybe uh, if we take proper history we can see that there is a history of any type of constant symptoms or malignancy etc but most common cause of pathological fracture is osteoporosis is found in the vertebral as a present as a vertebral compression fracture not in the limb and in case of child like um, uh, and uh, who is suffering from benign bone disease like anonychal bone cyst simple bone cyst unicameral bone cyst they may pre- uh, or fibrous dysplasia they may s- they may present with a Uh, pain over the, sw- the swelling with the incidental finding that there is osteolysis with a pathological fracture and in case of pediatric age group it is not so much important because uh, maximum pediatric bone tumor used to uh, regress itself after a pathological fracture because due to this fracture there is a mm, increased prostaglandin over this area and it can heal automatically due to growth factor of the hematoma but if uh, this pathological fracture is in the old age then if uh, that will not properly manage that can cause a devastating problem and before going in details i just want to uh, introduce about uh, this pathological fracture pattern when you will see the pathological fracture uh, you cannot uh, fracture fracture itself not uh, saying or patient not saying sir i am suffering from pathological fracture you have to choose you have to uh, understand the, uh, the history along with the clinical examination then we have to do radiological correlation and in our opd basis practice or in our any uh, type of private practice we, um, we used to give very small time to our patient Uh, we should uh, keep at least an, uh, a proper clinical examination when we are dealing with this uh, uh, type of abnormal fracture with a trivial trivial trauma 
and we should keep in mind in a, a, a thumb rule that above the age of 50 years any osteolysis in the bone take it granted as a metastasis or myeloma until and otherwise proved okay and you must keep in mind pathological fracture is not an emergency we should not go to this patient post this patient immediately mm, mm, for operation you have to evaluate first then we uh, should treat the patient by the time you can use a uh, slab or you can give a immobilization like thomas splint which is the most common splintage used for shaft of femur fracture and do you know thomas splint is discovered during the world war where um, there is a maximum patient die for shaft of uh, femur fracture now go in details regarding the clinical radiological assessment when you are getting any type of x-ray fracture you have to read this x-ray and always ask for full length of the x-ray you have uh, you keep in mind the rule of two rule of two means you have to know uh, you have to see the both joint above and below in case of long bone and both view ap and lateral and always uh, uh, check the patient first then see the x -ray. so first is uh, clinical examination second is uh, the radiological examination and then you have to go for clinical radiological assessment and during uh, this x -ray evaluation we have to know that the pathological fracture is a special type of fracture which occur in a already weak bone or already diseased bone so the mechanism of injury uh, of this fracture generally due to a trivial trauma so most commonly due to trivial trauma there is a chance in the normal bone uh, there will be no fracture but in abnormal bone which uh, um, is uh, already weak there is a chance of collapse or impaction there is a chance of spiral fracture or if there is bone is very uh, osteosclerosis type then the, uh, the chance of transverse fracture and sometimes is also present as a oblique fracture, fracture also and uh, sometimes you can see and there is a wide zone of transition now what do you mean by wide zone of transition when you uh, are seeing any type of x-ray you have to read this uh, this x-ray suppose i am reading this x-ray this is a skeletally immature x-ray showing uh, the knee joint ap view um, and the lower one third of the um, femur and there in uh, the physis is intact and there is a osteolysis over the eccentric osteolysis over the, the uh, distal aspect uh, of the femur with a soft tissue shadow same thing the, and there is a more thickened appearance see and there is a complete geographical lesion so if this uh, the distance between uh, the disease part and the normal part is very uh, mm, less this is called uh, low uh, small zone of transition but if the disease from the disease part uh, when we, we want to go to the normal disease part the distance is more this is called wide zone of transition and if there is any osteolysis then sclerosis osteolysis this sclerosis this is type this is called uh, moth in appearance and if the infiltration is much more um, take much more area this is called permeative lesion okay and um, now uh, when how i uh, how we can uh, differentiate it from a trauma this is very important first we have to take a proper history you have to uh, do a clinical examination then when we see the fracture the fracture side must be uh, some special significance that can uh, bring uh, uh, your attention towards the pathological fracture see 
there is a schematic diagram when we are seeing the fracture site you have to uh, uh, assess the bone matrix this is called bone matrix see there is a calcification there is a calcification and this is very irregular okay this is very irregular and along with um, this you have to see the soft tissue there is a soft tissue swelling there is a mass see this is this is the soft tissue shadow and when uh, in case of normal fracture the extent of the fracture will um, be very clear cut but if we delay pathological fracture then there may be some osteolysis which is extend into the intermedullary cavity see there is a uh, huge osteolysis over uh, the distal part of um, humerus and the same this is also seen in in this AP view also same thing there is a oblique fracture but this part of bone is not normal then there is uh, there is osteolysis along with a soft tissue shadow and when we are getting this type of x-ray then uh, we must offer a normal stabilization like for this we can apply arm pouch back for lower limb we can apply a thomas pin then we have to counsel the family member and we must go for first investigation local investigation e mri we can easily found the soft tissue mass see this is this was the x-ray now uh, then and uh, and already i have told there is a soft tissue shadow see this is on the mri this is a huge soft tissue shadow and this is this is the bone and uh, the, this is the dead this is the pathological tissue again here and uh, this this uh, this osteolysis is correspond with this interosseous extension so the first invest investigation is x-ray second is investigation is mri next we have to go for the treatment protocol of uh, this uh, type of fracture but we have to keep in mind maximum patient are in, uh, belonging in in old age and maximum patient is suffering from end stage disease so they always try um, to avoid uh, all type of treatment and, uh, and they try to die peacefully but we have to keep in mind uh, that uh, uh, any type of uh, this complicated case cannot be approached as a s n n n single person because n in our um, general um, playing any type of game the goalkeeper uh, like um, uh, suppose we are playing football the striker will do the goal but for making this environment or getting this ball in this penalty box th there is a role of every person of this team so it is a teamwork it is not a one army game same thing when we are dealing with this type of problem where only an, uh, mm, the bone is not involved there may be a ch chance of metastasis there may be a chance of metabolic disease there may be a chance of uh, any other um, secondary uh, from an, uh, our um, abdominal viscera or in, uh, any chest or any prostate or uh, any mm, cancer or any sarcoma arising from the head to toe so we have to uh, make a multidisciplinary team uh, in uh, orthopedic or musculoskeletal oncology we need a specialized multidisciplinary team or board meeting and where this is constituted of uh, medical oncologist radiologist radiotherapist pathologist onco psychiatrist and last the poor fellow is orthopedic surgeon now maximum ma uh, pathological fracture present on, uh, with uh, mm, uh, pain may be hyper alzheimer and they are on, uh, will always some multiple comorbidity and um, the main thing uh, uh, that we have to keep in mind this type of fracture can hamper the quality of life 
because the survival of this type of patient is very low so we keep in mind how we can increase its uh, 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 patient survival period and uh, how we can decrease the pain and we can mobilize the patient otherwise if patient got bedridden there is multiple chance of um, uh, problem like bed sore like infection like an an spirit attack the problem and so on so decision making factor and uh, the preoperative consideration is the uh, whether we will go for surgery or we will uh, do um, or we manage it conservatively first we have to look uh, uh, look after the quality of life and uh, if we can see there is multiple metastases in the lung in the bone in the kidney brain liver then this type of patient must be treated by palliative intent what do you mean by palliative intent there are two type of treatment in the cancer or sarcoma one is curative intent curative intent means they are very selective cases where uh, we can get a oligo metastasis oligo metastasis means this is an uh, only metastasis to the lung or one metastasis to the end lung nodule or one to the bone or one metastasis to the, the liver so this is called oligo metastasis and or this tumor is confined to that particular particular area this type of patient can be treated and the survival duty of this patient is very uh, quite good so uh, this type of mm, mm, patient can be treated by definitive treatment means uh, patient can survive from the uh, cancer and uh, his life disease free interval disease free life will be better but when we are dealing with a multiple metastasis patient that must be associated with multiple comorbidity so in that case patient uh, will uh, just uh, uh, need palliative treatment or support supportive therapy to evaluate the pain to um, just mobilization and to prevent the infection that's all or nutritional support and as well as psychological support because um, uh, pain is the most common complaint and and in order to move is the most common co complaint in the end stage mm, sarcoma patient so mm, uh, the palliative treatment mm, uh, is the best treatment for for multiple metastasis patient now only that patient will go for definitive treatment where we can do r0 resection r0 means we can resect that tumor bed without lifting any tumor tissue surrounding and we can resect the tumor bed along with some healthy portion of the uh, of the muscle this is also called wide dissection just keep in mind the term only that's all and when we will operate this type of metastasis or multiple myeloma or any type of um, uh, old um, multiple comorbidity patient when we can judge from the all aspect of this patient from, um, that uh, his survival at least 6 months to 1 year otherwise there is no no, no no question for any operative intervention okay and um, and um, uh, we need a experience and expertise team also now additional preparation for better outcome is uh, as this type of patient has a very limited physiological reserve and already immunosuppressed due to their age and chemotherapy so we have to very very cautious and um, we have to prevent pneumonia hypotension low uh, you have to take care of this low serum albumin there may be chance of electrolyte dis disturbance uh, calcium magnesium potassium sodium this um, electromia and during the blood transfusion uh, and, uh, they, they may be high volume blood transfusion uh, undergo high volume blood transfusion so um, we have to take care of that 
along with and uh, if we uh, need any type of surgery that I um, during this intraoperative period if we want to decrease the bleeding uh, we can go for arterial embolization preoperatively but after this arterial embolization we must push the patient within 24 to 36 hours otherwise this embolization will not going to work then we have to keep in mind about the deep vein prophylaxis also and uh, that operation must be done in the very early morning or daylight working hours because we need a good anesthesia team we need a good surgical expertise as well as uh, ICU backup and um, uh, and whole the team will be on the toe and like um, uh, any flight when uh, um, uh, are in the verge of uh, take off there is some safety protocol and all uh, before uh, before take off each and every uh, flight assistant used to uh, show you the safety protocol same thing here uh, th because they always think that flight will going to crash so to prevent this type of emergency or uh, to manage this type of emergency we have to uh, make our pre-operative protocol we already uh, mm, plan that uh, this type of emergency can occur uh, so uh, we have to mm, get back up of uh, all uh, mm, the needed items now what are the workups first is x-ray film then we can recently there is a special investigation called PET scan PET scan or PET CT scan can uh, use is a non-invasive technique and we can um, uh, see head to toe where is the metabolic activity occur where is the less metabolic activity where is the metastasis where is the, uh, uh, the decrease the activity so it will give huge information uh, within uh, a uh, single procedure now uh, complete blood cell count and ESR is very important along with liver function test creatinine calcium and phosphorus lactate dehydrogenase and alkaline phosphatase along with in case of male we have to must uh, take the prostate specific antigen and uh, you, um, uh, and uh, to exclude multiple myeloma you have to uh, know the serum urea ketin along with um, uh, the urine for benzonus protein and uh, serum beta 2 microglobin electrophoresis and to exclude any other primary sources or unknown primary we have to check for some um, uh, uh, some antigen like um, uh, CEA CA125 CA19 9 CA 15 3 so all are this is very important you have to uh, um, uh, do before going in uh, um, or before uh, before treating any type of pathological fracture now there is a guideline clear cut guideline how we treat a pathological fracture you uh, as i already told you the history is very important then the clinical examination like not only the local examination you have to go for thorough clinical examination like limb node like breast like thyroid swelling or general examination mm, like uh, in case of male parietal in case of female pv everything now x-ray then mri to evaluate the extent of the uh, tumor and hope to see involvement and then uh, uh, we can um, after that we have to do a core needle biopsy confirmation because any pathological fracture may be due to primary tumor or may be due to distant metastasis or may be due to any um, type of metabolic uh, problem like hyperparathyroidism hyper uh, bound tumor or multiple myeloma multiple myeloma is special type of tumor I will discuss uh, it within two to three minutes but 
ऑल दिस टाइप ऑफ डिजीज कैन कॉज ए ऑस्ट्रोलाइसिस और पैथोलॉजिकल फ्रैक्चर सो बिफोर एम्बार्क एनी बिफोर इन डूइंग एनी इंटरवेंशन वी कैन नो वी हैव टू डू ए पोर बायोप्सी एज पर प्रॉपर गाइडलाइन दिस इज द लेटेस्ट गाइडलाइन फॉर पैथोलॉजिकल फ्रैक्चर अदरवाइज If you want to manage or if you do something, some some intervention, then it can uh, jeopardize uh, the survivability of the limb as well as the patient. Because see, this is a transverse fracture of the uh, sad femur. Sad femur. Now, some someone put a nail along with a plate. See, the after uh, this fixation. there is a huge swelling with osteoblastic activity after that when biopsy done then it turn as a pleomorphic sarcoma now the whole procedure is called hoops procedure hoops procedure means if you are dealing with a malignant tumor and uh, or sarcoma without doing any biopsy without knowing anything without planning without knowing any intra uh, osseous extrusion or germ disease or knowing any type in, in, uh, or without staging suppose this patient is in a, a, has a small metastasis or this is a metastasis from in his lung any type of tumor and, and um, in, in when we are dealing with a malignant uh, disease and we enter into this uh, uh, tumor and we, we have done uh, an intervention suppose when we are introducing a nail uh, we have to rim this this canal so if there is a uh, due to a, a primary tumor uh, suppose that that primary tumor is just extend from 1 uh, cm prox proximal or 1 cm distal now during rimming um, i just uh, uh, intentionally um, put this um, malignant tissue into this gt so this is one type of metastasis so we have contaminated the whole uh, the medullary cavity where if we uh, do this biopsy before uh, putting the nail then or we have done the proper <coughs> work up we can just excise this part only that will be better or that that will be maximum then this type of complication never happen so and that can be managed with a whole tumor processes but maximum cases the um, this type of patient will uh, infiltrate all <coughs> or contaminated the neurovascular stress structure so limb salvage cannot be possible uh, possible there uh, there will be uh, maximum chances of man uh, amputation not only amputation if you do something mm, and this called hoops procedure then maximum chances of metastasis also when patient present with uh, this type of er recurrent swelling by the time uh, it already metastasized so do not um, go for um, any hurry this is not not an emergency manage it accordingly just investigate this patient then we will uh, look the uh, it is metastasis or any primary tumor or multiple myeloma if this is multiple myeloma on uh, we have an, um, uh, then uh, you have to go for all this investigation and treat it accordingly if it is the primary sarcoma then treat it with the limb salvage surgery or if it is a metastasis then we have to think for the um, uh, the primary sources we have to treat the primary uh, sources if we uh, see this this this, uh, this is multiple uh, site of metastasis we cannot do so much then Uh, we can just uh, do special type of operation we just for lower limb we can mobilize the patient for a few uh, uh, days or few months the or uh, this type of operation we have to do that that can uh, uh, alleviate the pain that's all now <coughs> i just give some example of uh, any metastasis and how we used to manage the most common site of metastasis is the proximal mm, femur and the distal femur and uh, diaphyseal region also affected and uh, mm, uh, and this type of metastasis must be have some very small uh, soft tissue component also so uh, if uh, we can uh, mm, uh, for lower limb some intervention 
is needed if uh, patient's survival is at least one year so we can mobilize the patient immediately so we can do the curatage and uh, the cement fixation or um, we can uh, go uh, some processes in case of proximal femur see there was a distal femur or proximal femur we can replace it with mega processes or in the proximal uh, region there is a osteolysis we can um, take the biopsy or curatage and we can um, uh, put a nail also now indication of operation or indication of any prophylactic treatment that must be governed by mirel scoring system that may be uh, asked as a mcq mirel scoring system how you know that uh, any pathological fracture is going to be impending pathological uh, any osteolysis of the bone is a, an, an impending pathological fracture or an uh, um, patient is suffering from intractable pain or solitary bone metastasis in a selective tumor patient um, when they need treatment that is governed by mirror scrolling system see for the it is very easy the upper limb lower limb and peri trochanteric region now if it is uh, upper limb then the score is one if it is lower limb means weight bearing bone then score is two and it is if it is in the peri trochanteric region that is uh, maximum is three now how is the pain mild moderate or uh, severe if this is mild then we have to put one if and, and it is moderate then we have to keep two if it is severe or any moment that will cause pain is uh, we ha have to take it as a three now we have to see the osteolysis type if it is blastic means uh, there uh, are two type of radio um, metastasis x-ray some x-ray is shows pure osteolysis some x-ray shows mixed type of there is osteolysis along with the bone matrix this is called mixed type and some x-ray um, um, cause blastic blastic means there will be new bone formation so if blastic so stability is high so it uh, will put one if mixed then stability is mean mixed type so it is two but if lighting the chance of fracture is very much so that will be treated as three now area is involved if it is less than one third then the uh, chance of fracture is less so that will be scored as a one if up to two third of the cortex then we will um, take it as a two but if when it it cross two third of the cortex then we have to uh, think this is a high chance of fracture so it will take it as a three after this scoring we have to and uh, see that um, if there is less than seven there will be a uh, low risk of fracture but if more than eight uh, or nine there is a high chance of pathological fracture so we have to go for any type of fixation especially in the in case of lower limb so again i just want to uh, give some information regarding the plastic and lighting maximum bone tumor uh, maximum bone metastasis for any tumor are uh, lytic among them uh, uh, some metastasis is pulsatile also like thyroid like kidney tumor metastasis to the bone they are pulsatile even now if there is only punched out lesion that may be a metastasis from bone crush lung if uh, mm, uh, this tumor and, uh, is uh, form of, of some osteoblastic activity like in case of spine there will be osteosclerosis that is the most common chance that is metastasis from post prostate cancer or seminoma or carcinoid like that and uh, in case of male lung is the most common cancer then uh, then um, the posterior and colon and in case of female uh, breast is the most common where breast cancer uh, 
80 percent chance of, uh, of bony metastasis are in the vertebrae or in the long bone in that case there will be maximum chance of osteolysis but 20 to 30 percent breast cancer can be present with a osteoblastic also even mixed type preparation also found okay but um, keep in mind prostate cancer and seminoma is very notorious for osteosclerotic type of metastasis uh, okay and i um, forget uh, to uh, um, ask one workup i'm extremely sorry that uh, we have to go for parathyroid hormone also pth because uh, hyper parathyroidism there is a chance of brown tumor also so we add here parathyroid hormone along with mri now uh, some surgical tips for proximal femur we can go for curate give the bone cement person and we can put a nail and we can um, mobilize the patient uh, and uh, for, uh, where the tumor is affect the neck part and there is very, ch very little chance of reconstruction we can go for resection and we can put a processes and for diaphyseal lesion there uh, and if we uh, get this type of uh, osteolysis we can curate it we can put a nail and spacer also and uh, for distal femur we can um, uh, do spacer um, or plate or we can do mega processes also for humerus there are two uh, three types of metastasis proximal middle and distal uh, and maximum in the cases we should not go for any fashionable reconstruction with uh, upper limb because uh, this is only a functional uh, uh, functional uh, to give the functional outcome just uh, a, an egg based nail cement special that's all and for digital uh, digital ministries uh, we can also use bone cement and a small spit up at cura touch and then uh, there is a uh, maximum osteolytic osteolysis in the old age may be present with a multiple myeloma before going in details for treatment of multiple myeloma we just utter two to three um, uh, uh, line regarding the multiple myeloma it's actually a one type of blood dyscrasia of plasma cell now the proliferation of plasma cell in the bone marrow that can cause myelopathistic anemia and um, it can cause monoclonal gammopathy and this uh, actually that in normal body the immunoglobulin is produced by uh, b lymphocyte cell and some plasma cell now when it is functional immunoglobulin then um, it contains both light chain and heavy chain but when only one light chain like kappa chain or um, uh, or lambda chain then uh, if it will produce a huge amount then that immunoglobulin will not going to do its normal function as a result there is a chance of increased infection maximum multiple patient prone to get infection and most common cause of death in the multi-myeloma is infection and along with hyperviscosity of the blood and amyloidosis due to long time of disease now this multiple myeloma due to multiple myeloma this uh, uh, um, uh, uh, small chain uh, immunoglobulin which is processed in the proteasome proteasome is a organelle present in the uh, cell that can cause uh, the folding of the protein, functional protein. Now, due to defect um, in the coronal proliferation of this immunoglobulin protein, uh, they can uh, pass uh, through the proteasome and produce multiple light chain. And this light chain can um, uh, affect the renal tubule, then can cause a cast nephropathy and it also cause hyperkalemia 
the uh, sorry hypercalcemia this hypercalcemia is the most common cause of renal shut down not the cast nephropathy and this type of coronal proliferation can also activate rank ligand and this rank ligand can affect the, uh, the osteoclast it can activate the osteoclast coronal proliferation and it decrease the activity of the osteoblast now due to activation of osteoclast that will gather and it form a active osteoclast and which can cause osteolysis so in the multiple myeloma there is a chance of axial skeletal like in a pelvis skull in a vertebrae uh, along with the proximal femur distal and uh, femur along with uh, the humerus also can get affected with multiple osteolysis and that will be patchy so it is also called Rendop pigmentation or Rendop osteolysis and uh, uh, the and due to bone loss there will be a hypercalcemia I already told and this hypercalcemia is the most common cause of renal mm, damage now the maximum uh, 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 patient of multiple myeloma may be present with uh, uh, first presentation will be pathological fracture now this uh, i just give you a small st story uh, this patient present in our uh, medical college opd and we were in mm, hurry at uh, around uh, 3 pm patient uh, patient came to our opd and we just had got admitted this patient and even i don't see this um, um, typical type of fracture i just see that patient was in uh, old man uh, patient and there is a history of fall i just admit this patient and on the next day i uh, for due to some mm, some reason i don't mm, mm, don't attend this patient and after that when i put this patient at operation i uh, be, uh, before pre operative radiologic assessment i was astonished uh, uh, how i miss this then i postponed that that operation and i search for an, um, uh, the investigation and uh, the investigation was a high rise of esr e esr was an uh, about 98 then low hemoglobin then we send all the investigation for um, multiple myeloma after that um, a patient was very um, uh, um, deteriorating and due to pain we have to put a nail now patient was diagnosed with multiple myeloma and with uh, we though we started the chemotherapy patient cannot continue this chemotherapy and patient go to um, uh, the home because um, we cannot do proper counseling and patient uh, again come with renal failure and ultimately die within two to three months so if uh, not only we have uh, do the counseling as well as we have to uh, give assurance to the patient that um, though there is a very little chance of survival but if we treat the patient properly then we can uh, give a peaceful life uh, to the patient also and the latest treatment of multiple myeloma is botrezumab, dexamethasone and lanidromide. Lanidromide is a special type of uh, immunomodulator which uh, is recently used and it has very less high effect only neurological problem. Dexamethasone you know and botrezumab is a proteosum inhibitor. Proteasum, uh, I already told you the, that that organ only which can um, cause this multiple zonal proliferation, um, this non-functional protein, and um, th this botrytumab acts on that proteasum and helps a lot. And this is the recent treatment protocol with botrytumab, dexamethasone, and lanidromide. But in some patient we can go for melphalan therapy, or we can go for bone marrow transplantation. But uh, uh, general, as a general we can go for this treatment for lifelong and along with uh, to treat this type of bony osteolysis we can use additional zoetonic acid which extremely helpful for the extremity fracture management and it will help um, uh, uh, to, uh, um, to get rid of this type of osteolysis 
and uh, multi myeloma as very important topic both for undergraduate both for um, postgraduate and theory viva just uh, read uh, the, the diagnostic criteria and recently there is a crab uh, criteria and uh, list called calcium uh, uh, estimation then renal insufficiency then anemia then um, bone disease so you have to uh, know this crab and there is a chance of end organ damage also and uh, um, multi myeloma has three type of multi myeloma is uh, or or gammopathy and uh, uh, then uh, uh, among them the smoldering mild cell myeloma you have uh, and, and uh, the uh, the uh, insignificant uh, origin multi myeloma must be diagnosed <laughs> properly and um, they need the treatment accordingly and i just want to clarify again there there is also special type of multi myeloma patient they may present with a plasma cytoma plasma cytoma is one type of general proliferation of a plasma cell in space only one uh, uh, will, will generally affect single bone and uh, most commonly it affect the axial bone not the limb uh, limb bone in that case we can uh, put that patient only radiotherapy if we do a proper diagnosis we can do only radiotherapy that is uh, no need of any any type of operation until unless it is in the weight bearing zone and, and present with a pathological fracture if it is present in the axial skeletal and there is a osteolysis and we can diagnose the case of um, plasmocytoma then no need to do any operation any resection nothing only localized uh, definite radiotherapy is the best treatment and it, it, it will dissolve automatically along with the multi myeloma chemotherapy may be needed or you have to discuss with uh, the medicine person and uh, 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 last but not the least just a revision uh, this is the uh, you have to go for skull x-ray this is the ap and um, this is the lateral view there are multiple random like pigmentation and the, the uh, and the urine uh, collection is called ben jones protein which is special uh, special type of protein which uh, will perseverate in a special um, uh, uh, 45 degrees centigrade then then it also dissolve in 90 degree so so this is very important for the ben jones protein area and um, uh, for general proliferation in the in the plasma cell uh, um, uh, that uh, that uh, that must be done in, uh, uh, by bone marrow aspiration and beta 2 electroglobulin microglobulin globulin electrophoresis m band this is called m band protein this is specially found in the multi myeloma but not also not only specific for the multi myeloma it can also found cml or any type of um, disease also but it, uh, this is based specific for multiple myeloma so uh, and I think I can cover uh, the all type of uh, uh, possibility in case of bone osteoarthritis. And, and last, uh, I just want to um, just memorize, which I uh, 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 miss, that if there is any uh, osteoarthritis uh, in the old age, you have to think that it can be a uh, metastasis or it can be a myeloma or and, uh, you, you have to exclude all um, uh, the possibility along with serum PTH uh, bound tumor may be a disease and um, may be a cause also even blood dyscasia like uh, 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 leukemia uh, Hodgkin lymphoma bone lymphoma also present this type of osteolysis and uh, that can be easily managed by the chemotherapy arts of regimen or an uh, any type of chemotherapy so uh, that is all for um, the treatment or to approach of the pathological fracture thank you